Well, the yard tasks of the day are completely done. Thank you, Christina. I know you had so much fun helping me stack all that wood right there. But, you know, uh, I know a lot of you out there don't want to hear this, but where we're currently located up in upstate New York, uh, winter is actually coming. So getting the wood stacked is actually going to start being a very important task. But uh, it's kind of funny because we just had all that wood inside the bus and we just removed it. And now we're going to go put more wood in the bus because we actually have to start building. And that's actually going to be the next thing on the task for the day is going to be finishing up the upper area up here and the subfloor. Once we get all that completely done, then we're moving on to 12 volt electrical and we can start actually running all of our wires and moving forward with that. Sad news, Dale. Dale, do you want to tell them the sad news that someone kind of left and... Are you sad about that? <laughs> oh, you're talking about Luke, okay. <laughs> Yes, so Luke actually we finished the FJ if you didn't get to watch that video I will link it right here, but Luke has headed out on the road He's back in his FJ and he's currently actually out in Colorado and uh, just living it up on out there and enjoying the new FJ build We've got Christina and Dale here on the build today to help on out. So we're gonna get strapping, get this bus moving along and get to some electrical. Well, the subfloor is completely in, and now it is time to start actually getting this entire upper area done and strapped in. I'm gonna be taking these beams out right here that used to be holding the electrical panel for the existing school bus electrical system, but now that it's gone, I'm actually gonna be putting a cabinet here. So I gotta get rid of these beams, frame it out, bring the strapping in, and then we can start getting all of our electrical, start running into the area and get it all figured out. So first thing is let's get cutting and strapping. concept right now is I'm trying to put these temporary supports in just so that I can kind of get an idea, get some measurements, and think through exactly how I want to get this framed because this front area matches up with the dash area. So I have to try to make that transition as clean as possible and understand what it's going to look like. So sometimes you got to build some things to kind of look at it and then take it apart because it doesn't work or maybe it does. Always take your time with these moments because I've said it before, uh, these moments are the moments that matter later when you want to make it look really clean. You gotta put the thought in now. So, right now we're gonna do a lot of thinking. Oops. Hope so. Okay. Well, the beginnings of the box are started. So we've got our strong supports in here. So eventually, you know, you can imagine all this is gonna be spray foamed. And then this space will be kind of like left open. And then I'm gonna insert a cabinet and it will get attached in later. But now the front of the cab is like dash area, upper cabinet. And then we've got this side space right here and side space over here that, you know, I could put maybe, I'm thinking maybe speakers, you know, on each side, I don't know, maybe extra storage, but first storage box is kind of framed out so we can move on. Now I just gotta finish this side and this side. 
racking the brain today. A lot of thinking. Before we actually get to that front section, someone arrived who's been on the build vlog before. I hope she wants to be on camera because I'm not even going to ask. Hi, Rita. Hi. <laughs> She's back with her shuttle bus. She uh, wanted to come on out for the weekend and check out what we've been doing. Last time we saw her, we were sanding the bus, weren't we? Yes, I was sanding the yeah, bus. Yeah, she was helping sand the bus. Look at Rita's pants. They have bus blood all over them. Ready? <laughs> then it's not coming out. Navi Jr. all over. It's never gonna come out. That's now your bus pair. <laughs> Every time you work on a bus, you have to wear those pants. Good deal. Now it's all blue. What do you think? I love it. Love it. You ready for some 12 volt electrical? Sure. I think I think we're all ready for the 12 volt electrical. I think we are. All right. I'm gonna go back to framing because I gotta frame that upper cabinet first. Then we can do 12 volt electrical. There so you, you get all settled in, and then uh, if you wanna if you wanna come on the bus, you know, come on over. Pretty much mostly put together. The idea is that I'm eventually gonna be putting a cabin here. So there'll be a door right here to kind of get access. So we need to create a base so that we can get it spray foam because this is actually the exterior of the bus. So that's, ooh, I can't even see it, but that's like outside, it's on the cutaway. So I wanna get the spray foam because it's gonna be a cold area then. So what we're doing is we're making kind of a base that will eventually get a plate put on top that will be spray foamed in. So then it gives us after spray foam our good mounting location to then start building the cabinet when we're ready to. Um, so now all I gotta do is cut a back piece right here for our back plate and then this is gonna be done and ready for spray foam. We got the entire front area done. Isn't that pretty cool? I mean, it doesn't really look like much right now, but we got our box. This will get spray foamed. Got our supports for our front piece. All right, next thing before 12 volt wiring is I'm gonna be running all the wires back through this corner. So I'm gonna have to get some type of casing so we can get the wires down, leave them deadheaded down here so that we can eventually do the solar system in the future. But we're gonna get all the wires to run right down this back corner. So gotta make the chase and then we can start putting wires through that. So we're in the back section now trying to figure out how we are going to get all of the different uh, wires down. And what Rita actually realized is that the old wire chase that originally had all of the tail lights, reverse lights and brake lights, which is now right here, is actually still large enough for us to get all of our solar wires through, our 12 volt wires through and everything kind of fished through. So what we're doing is we're using the old wiring. This used to be what the bus originally had for all of its wiring. We're gonna repurpose it and we're gonna fish it down that channel so then we can hide all the wires back into that channel and it's gonna give us an ability to get it right on down. So it's definitely not gonna be easy, but I think Rita's real confident. We've got the entire rebuilt in the back and we are just about to start wiring, but my sister kind of took my car and I totally forgot to take the wire out of the back, so. Hey Mike, so I was looking in the back of the car and I found all your wiring um, for the electrical for the bus this weekend. So I guess you'll have to pause your plans, but I'll see you in a couple days. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to wait until Monday when she comes back with all the parts, but that's okay, because there's always more work to be done, there's always other things to do, 
but let's pop up to Monday when we get back to wiring. Well, welcome to Monday, and we now have all of our electrical wire, which means now we can start officially wiring the school bus, and uh, Rita actually headed out, so Rita's not around anymore, but it's me and Dale, and me and Dale are gonna start putting the wires in and get started on this entire thing. We're gonna start in the back and just start moving and see where we end up. Before we start wiring, we got all of our supplies together and some of the basic things we're going to need to start running this actual 12 volt electrical system. So I wanted to show you some of the supplies that I'm actually going to be using. This is not everything I'll be using, but it's kind of a good start and maybe giving you some ideas of what you might be able to use uh, if you're running your 12 volt electrical. Um, first thing I always get is I got a bunch of these, you know, quick connects, waterproof connections, which just come in large packages. They're all just butt splices for 12 volt. They make from different sizes. We got our zip ties right here. Uh, in this bag, I've got these little waterproof connections, which essentially, um, these waterproof connections, they go through metal. Uh, so essentially, unscrew it, put it through metal, and then it actually has a rubber gasket on the inside, which will tighten around the wire. And by doing that, we create a waterproof seal. I've got my long snake, just in case I need to run wires through anything. All of my wire connections, so we can make sure we nail them down correctly and we get them actually locked down so they're not just flying inside of the wall. And then I always like to have these. These are uh, just waterproof grommets and different things that you can use through different uh, services. So the idea is that we never exactly want to have any type of wire go through a piece of metal. If it's going through metal, we want a grommet on it because we don't want the vibration from the bus in the future to wear away the rubber insulator and then you end up with a short. So uh, we want to make sure we have all of our proper stuff so that we can make sure we can move forward with the wiring. Besides that though, I mean, it's just running wires from one spot to the next and making sure you do it safely. And that's what we're going to get started on doing. So we got all the wires completely, you know, unwrapped and stuff, but this stuff's a pain to work with because when you try to pull it out of the roll, it just unravels itself. So I'm actually going to build something really quick with Dale that is going to solve this entire problem and give us a really easy way to actually run the wires in this bus. So pretty much, whoa, whoa, there's Dale. Dale, you want to show him a bit of the plan? The plan is we're going to take this old broken piece of metal and we're going to cut it so that essentially it can slide through the actual hole and then we can mount it somewhere on the bus so then it simply can just pull and roll on itself and uh, we can just get the exact measurements of what we need. Whoa, Dale, look, that already works, man. So now we just uh, gotta build a little mounting system and whoop, whatever wire you need, just gonna roll right on out. So right here, we just finished up our little mounting system that we just built out of just scrap material. But essentially we got our two rolls right here. We got our wires coming out of the bottom. It goes through a little eyelet, if you can see it right there. But essentially now when we want wire, all we got to do is just pull it. It's going to come out, it holds all the wire and it's going to make it super clean so we're not going to be worried about these unraveling themselves while we're trying to pull feet and feet of wire. Also, if we ever want to use this again in the future, we just pull this piece of metal out and we can remove the wire, add a new roll if we run out, and uh, I think I might actually hold on to this thing, keep it for the future. Okay, so you can probably see all these 
you know, wires hanging next to my head. What these are actually now are going to be the puck lights. Um, so a couple things that I actually wanted to point out because I was just talking to Dale about it, and I was like, you know what? These are mistakes I made in the past and I want to make sure that no one makes them as well. So two things. One, uh, I left them really long. The reason why I left them really long was because of two reasons. One, I don't have the exact measurement of where they're gonna be in the ceiling at this current moment. So by leaving them long, it gives me the ability to kind of have a bit of a radius to kind of work with so that when I do my final measurements, I can still have a bit of wiggle room to be able to get it to the location I perfectly want when we actually do our final plywood. Secondly, uh, when you get this thing spray foamed, you wanna leave these long because the spray foam people are coming in and they're spraying all these gaps and stuff. And if you leave them like really short, you know, little bits sticking out, there's a good chance, which has happened to me, they're gonna end up accidentally spray foaming your wires in, and then you're gonna have to dig for them and find them later. So I've learned my lesson. Uh, so what I do is I run them to my about locations, run them nice and long, and then just let them hang, and then I'll tie them up and clean them up right before we spray foam. Uh, but that's one really good suggestion that uh, please don't make that mistake, because I have multiple times. Second thing is, I'm doing something pretty cool on this one that I'm pretty excited about. We're actually gonna be running a three-way switch for these. So right here, there's gonna be a wall that eventually will have a switch. So I ran my wires in so that I can do that, but I also ran three wires to the back of the bus. I got a ground, and then I got my two reds here, which are tracer wires that are gonna go back to these ones right here that are hanging down. Now it's gonna be near impossible for you to imagine exactly what it's gonna look like, but just pretend that there's a full wall right here and these are the three tracer wires that come from that switch in the front. So these are gonna to go to a light switch right here that is then also gonna control the puck lights, which actually means that I can control the puck lights that are gonna be in the ceiling from the front door, or I can control them from this wall back here. So when I walk in the bus, you flip on a light switch, they all turn on. I'm back here into my bedroom and I wanna flip off the lights, you flip them back here and it's gonna turn them off. And so we're wiring in a full three-way switch scenario here so that you have multiple locations to control the same light. So yesterday we did get started a bit late, so we didn't get as much done as we wanted to, but we uh, did get a bunch of labels done. So we were able to label out exactly where we want our new wiring. So yesterday, of course, we got all of our puck light wiring done, and now we gotta get going on getting all of our other accent lighting, our water pump, the max fan, which is right here, and a bunch of other wiring. So we're gonna start getting going on that, get it all finished up so that 12 volts are done. Ready, Dale? Let's go. Let's do it. We've gotten up quite a bit of the wiring done, the max fan, the front cabinet light, some of the inset lightings that we're gonna be putting into cabinets. But what I just finished is going through and actually you know, labeling everything and getting it all put together. Eventually the DC panel is gonna go somewhere right here. So one thing that I always try to do is when I wire them, I just put a little you know, painter's tape on it, label exactly what it is so that I can just leave them all coiled up nicely in the corner here so that when we actually get to the solar system, it's ready to go. But now that I have them labeled, I won't have any question moving forward if that's the wire I'm looking for. I won't have to continuity test, won't have to second guess anything. So labeling them right now is going to save you a lot of headache in the future. So there's like hmm, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about seven already wired, but we've still got about like 14 to 20 to go. So a lot of wiring left, but keeping it organized is gonna be key. How do you think it's going here, Dale? Going great so far. It's pretty much. I don't know what that, else to tell you. That pretty much sums it up. We're just running wires, so we're gonna get back to it. We've officially got all of the upper wires completely done. So now that we walk through the bus, we're just gonna keep hitting our heads on all these things until we actually get them finalized after spray foam. But uh, if anyone's noticed, we're running a double wire system, which means we have a ground and our positive. And, and a lot of times with buses, what you can do is actually just use the bus as a common ground. 
Uh, one reason why I'm not doing that in this situation is because we are going to be doing a full spray foam insulation and I'm not going to have access to the actual metal of the bus. So I'm running a two wire system so that the ground actually goes all the way back to a single chassis ground instead of actually just going positive and then off into the actual metal, which would then be a common ground. So that's why we're doing a double wire system. And I don't think I actually mentioned in the video, but Dale brought up a good point. Uh, what size wire are we using in this case? Um, all of the wire that I'm using at this point is 14 THHN wire. Um, so essentially, if you were to look at it, it's not solid. It has a bunch of little fibers in there or little copper fibers that are running through. So it's super flexible um, and it's 14 gauge wire. So it's rated for so many amps. There are some cases in here, if anyone's wondering, that I will be using 10 um, THHN, but very rarely. And that's only because of certain wiring scenarios that I'm specifically doing inside of this rig. But at this point, since the entire upper side of the bus is kind of pre-wired, we're gonna start tightening it all up, getting it all nice and put together, and then pretty much uh, move on to the next thing. All right, same place, different face. Unfortunately, I was filming this amazing, awesome outro about like how we tied up all the wires and what's gonna be coming up next, but I realized I never turn on the microphone and I am currently editing this video and finishing it up, so here we are doing the outro. Either way, we got all the 12 volt wiring done and we're gonna be moving forward with that. Last thing to do before spray foam is actually gonna be doing the rooftop deck. I gotta get all of that completely finished and strapped in and the wood's showing up tomorrow, so Thanks for watching this one. Next time, rooftop deck. See you there.